I was talking to my friend early in July about various display techniques, and they pointed me at this video by Ben from Applied Science, and it's, it's an amazing video. I urge you to go watch it. Uh, at any rate, I, I headed over to Waveshare, the people who make a bunch of types of e-paper displays, and uh, bought some. And it was basically the very next day that they went and posted to their Twitter about this seven color display, and it blew my mind. So I just immediately headed over to Waveshare and bought it. And well, good thing I did, because right after I bought it, it went out of stock. So you can tell that there's a lot of other people who thought this was pretty cool. Not long after I purchased this did I actually start to get some ideas about what I might be able to do with it. And one of those ideas was to make a gift for my mom, a picture frame which changed pictures at night. So because it's an e-paper display, it doesn't light up. It looks a lot like an actual picture. I really wanted to make something where I could try to trick my mom into thinking that I gave her a different picture. So. I don't know, maybe I was going to gaslight her. I don't know how well that would work, considering she, well, knows that I'm as crazy as I am. The reason I wanted to have it update at night is because this version of the display can take up to 15 seconds to update, which, if you're, you know, looking at it, you're going to notice something's up. You might be wondering why I decided to release the video now instead of back in August, and it's because they're back in stock, and you can go buy some and do everything that you see in this video yourself now. Because I had a pretty good idea as to what I was going to do, I ended up designing it on the stm 32 f 42 on a live stream with a whole bunch of other people who could go contribute their sorts of ideas and attitudes towards things. I decided to write it as a pure software-based driver. That way, when I was going to be porting to a completely different processor, eventually I moved to the ATmega 128PB just because of simplicity for low power, I was able to do so with minimal effort. One of the things I decided to do was take a look at this e-paper display under a microscope while it was changing, and I thought it was pretty neat. It goes through these sorts of just patterns of going in and out, and I think it substantiates Ben's idea as to how these displays actually work. Uh, I'm still a little bit confused as to how it could work with this many colors, but it was pretty fun. A little bit after doing the live stream, I discovered yet another color that the displays could display, a sort of purpley, whitish color. And even though it wasn't exactly the most vivid of colors, it was still something that could help pad the colors and make it just a little bit better. Now that I had all of the parts of the system kind of moving, I had this, this bit-banged library which I could run on just about any processor I'd ever want, and I could do it without much effort porting. Much to my surprise, it just kind of worked on the ATmega 168, so I still needed to be able to do two other things. One was make it so it would be really low power, and the other one was to be able to support SD cards so I could store my images on an SD card. Now, one of the things you might be familiar with is that a lot of people use SPI to talk to SD cards, and you also might be familiar that that's not really that great of a solution because a lot of SD cards don't support SPI as a communication protocol, which is honestly kind of surprising that they're all that terrible. But many years ago, I ran into a similar problem where there was an SD card with a Wi-Fi that I wanted to talk to and it did not support SPI, so I went and wrote my own software bit banged stack for talking to SD cards using the SCSI commands. And it's actually really small and really simple, so I used it. I was then able to take just these random old 16 gigabyte, just modern SD cards and plug them directly into this ATmega 168 and everything just kind of worked. Now, just because I was able to have some .raw files on some SD cards that were able to load images into the display does not mean my job was over. I still had to make this thing really low power, and I also had to pick out some pictures to use with it and figure out the best way to display them. In order to take a nice high fidelity image and convert it into something that you can easily and clearly display on this WaveShare device, you're going to have to take your image and convert it down to eight colors. Now the way I found to do this was to select these eight colors manually and then go convert it by Floyd Steinberg. If you try it for any of the others, say nearest, it looks like garbage. If you try positional, it looks really rough. But Floyd Steinberg dithering looks really, really good on this display. And uh, I think you'd agree. Now that's not everything. I did try a few things to get even better color representation on this display. But it didn't really pan out. I, I really tried taking a picture of the display displaying all of the colors, blurring it, and then using those as the palette things so that the display that GIMP thinks it will be presenting the user is what the user would actually see. 
unfortunately, the Floyd Steinberg algorithm just doesn't look very good when you convert the image to anything that's other than the sort of stretched palette, this imaginary palette that I started with. So that's why I'm pretty confident that the palette colors that I've chosen inside of the converter application are pretty good. After being converted down to the colors, it goes in this converter application, which goes, looks up in a table, the closest color to each of the known indexes, and then creates a data file, like a raw file, that would be able to be displayed to the WaveShare color display. I selected several images that I would put onto the card, and each one would be read off at around 3 a.m. every night, and would be displayed in sequence until it rolled over and then displayed the first picture again. And I needed to be able to make this entire process really, really low power. On the board here, I actually have the ability to cut off power to either the SD card or the display. So I had a much more complicated sequence of events that I would do instead of just leaving the power to the display and SD card on. The idea is that most of the time, the microcontroller lives in a power save mode. And that power save mode is only about 40 microamps. It's actually a little bit less. And that's for the entire system because it has the display and SD card off. Then, once every 24 hours, it wakes up and it powers everything off just to make sure it was off. Then it powers on the e-paper and initializes it and it powers on the micro SD card and then it proceeds to read the next image off of the SD card. And once it's done reading the image, it turns the SD card back off and then it issues the command to the display to go change. And while it has the display and SD card on, it's using around 16 to 20 milliamps. And then when it decides to go flip, it goes up to about anywhere between 10 and 50 milliamps. But because it only does this once a day, that actually doesn't use very much power. Over the course of the 18 seconds that it takes to switch the image, it uses on average about 27 milliamps, which adds up to 486 milliamp seconds. But that's actually only 0.135 milliamp hours. Over the course of the day, it uses about 30 microamps at a time. So over 24 hours, it uses about 790 microamp hours. All of this totals together to under a milliamp hour per day. So with these two 380 milliamp hour Tenergy batteries, this is probably going to last in upwards of around two years. I could have done some things to get the idle power usage a little bit lower, but it just wasn't worth it. It was already pretty low as it was, and I was happy with it and decided to move on. Up next is the final assembly. I was able to just mount the circuit board, the TB168. By the way, the schematics and code is all in the description below. Um, so I was able to mount the circuit board to the back of the picture frame and then use magnet wire to connect that circuit board to the picture frame and use regular old connectors to connect to the batteries. And from there, I basically had a standalone e-paper display which would do what I needed. I went to Michael's then to get the mat professionally framed, and it's just because it's really hard to get a professional look on a mat. Uh, from there, it just fit the display right in, and I tried putting it into the picture box. Uh, unfortunately, there really wasn't enough room for the batteries and everything else, and so I had to try extra hard to go shave off a little bit of material here and there in order to make everything fit and not look really suspicious. I did want to test this for a few days before actually giving it to my mom, so I did. I put the batteries in at 3.30 a.m., and from there, I decided to just check up on it every day or so to make sure everything was well. And the answer was it did work, and it worked really well. So, the night before came. I went, I put in the batteries, and there was the picture of my brother at his wedding. Little did I know that my mom had the same exact picture on display in her living room. So I totally could have picked a better picture if I was going to go trick her. Let's see what she says when I give her this gift. Oh, isn't that... That's nice. That's beautiful. So I actually printed that one myself using a new technique. Huh. I noticed it's different from the one that I have. Yep. Thank you. The very next day, she called me, and uh, I think the conversation kind of speaks for itself. Um, yeah, and I was uh, pleasantly uh, surprised to see uh, the next photo on there. <laughs> Did you expect that? No, I, I didn't. When you gave it to me, I didn't expect anything like that. Yeah, that, that's nice. Does it change every 24 hours or what? Yes. 
Wow. Well, thank you. I mean, that, that's really a very unique present. <laughs> uh, um, I was going to try to, like, drag it along, but I figured, like, Dad kind of ruined it yesterday with saying, like, just ask him tomorrow or something like that. Um, ask, ask what tomorrow? Like, just to drag it along to make you think that it was, like, a different, the, the same, like, that was the picture I gave you. Like, play dumb. Yeah, I mean, I thought, well, I'll have two of the wedding then, which is just fine. It would just, there would just be two different locations there in the dining room. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> so I think ultimately my mom kind of smelled something was up. At any rate, this was a, a really fun project, but trying this new format, I don't think any of my other videos are going to be quite this in-depth moving forward. Uh, but yeah, go get one of these color displays. They're awesome. All of my code and schematics are in the links in the description. And thanks for watching. Ugh, it's so weird that there's just nothing plugged in and the picture is still there. It's so strange.